Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about Simone Biles because today she um, withdrew from the women's gymnastics team in the Olympics. And at first they didn't know why um, she did it. All they knew is that she was practicing a vault. And I'm going to show you what it looked like when she did it and then she withdrew. So first, before I get into the politics behind this situation... Let's just look at the vault that she did. I just want to pop in here to say they were trying to copyright my video. So just look on YouTube and see the vault that she did before she withdrew. And see, first of all, this wasn't in competition. They were just still practicing. The competition hadn't even started yet. So she did that vault. And then that's when everything changed. She said um, she withdrew. From the competition and at that time nobody even understood why now when i first saw the headline i wasn't surprised because if if you see how i see <laughs> and not just me a lot of people you would see that um you could tell that this was coming they were not setting this up the entire time now one thing i want people to understand about sports and the industry in general is that you have to remove your emotions you cannot be emotionally involved in any of these situations because what we have to realize is that we are not in control this is not our um industry we do not control this so the whoever controls this y'all know who we who i'm talking about they dictate what will and will not happen, including who will win and who will not. If y'all thought that they was about to allow her to sweep the Olympics and get what, six gold medals, was that a golden team, golden vault, bars, a beam, floor, and the all-around? If y'all thought they was about no. No. And if you've been paying attention to the way that this stuff works, you could have seen this coming a mile away. A mile away. So even um, so, after that happened, she put out her statement. Said at the end of the day, she did what was best for her, right? And I'm not saying that she's not under a lot of pressure. I'm not saying that uh, you know she's not having any kind of issues mentally or whatever. What I'm saying is. The people who they want to win will win. <laughs> it has nothing to do with how talented somebody is or nothing. Now, if you look at her Instagram and look at what she has been centered around um, here recently, everything points to the same thing. And it's not just her. All of the big time athletes are they're they're using the same narrative. Once again, not to say that these people are not having issues mentally because everybody have their moments. This is to say that there is always a narrative and an agenda that, they're push, that they push. You think that all of a sudden now these people are actually giving... <laughs> I was about to cut. These people actually care about these athletes' mental health. These people care about money and money only. <laughs> These are not the first athletes who have been experiencing issues outside of the sport, issues outside of movies, issues outside of TV shows. It didn't matter. They had to put on a face and keep it going. And that don't mean times is changing. It just means the agendas is different. But you have to dive deeper in, into um, what they're doing with the mental health. Like, it, it, it goes very, very deep, and I'm not going to even get into it in this particular video, but I'm just tell you, they don't care. They care about money. Just like when when um, this happened, majority of the people talking about, oh, the Team USA not going to get the gold. They're more concerned about the trophy, <laughs> the prize, than they are about the actual person's mental health. And that's with everything. So if you look at the cover of this magazine, you can see it right here. Simone Biles, under pressure. If you go on her Instagram, 
you can see. The show she got out is her versus her herself. She talked about the pressure underneath this. This was like, what, two or three days ago. Then look at another post on her Instagram. It's about the same thing. So you have to just fo- just follow it. Remove your emotions and follow it. Because I was one. I used to be. I haven't really been in tune with sports in years. But I used to be one of the people who was hollering and screaming and you know, when my team is playing, I'm so evolved in it. Like, if somebody lose, I'm mad. If somebody win, I'm ha- Like, you, when you remove yourself, like, take the emotions out of it and realize it's all um, set up to how they want it to be, then you'll be able to see a whole lot more. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's not about somebody's talent. It's not about anything. It's all about money. This was another post she did. It says, smile, you're at the Olympics. And again, that's not to say that she was not having any issues. I got to keep saying that because people are very emotionally attached to a lot of things. And they don't. And some folks can't see outside of that. So this is not taking away anything from her or her mental health. It, I'm just saying there's always an agenda that is being pushed in certain industry in the industry okay remember Naomi Osaka did the same thing uh just a few months ago when she withdrew from Wimbledon I believe and then she um withdrew from whatever tournament she was in at the time I can't remember what tournament it was but remember she um did the same thing and this, I'm not saying this is a trendy thing and, you know, but, and it's not a bad thing. But just remember when we we are not, or when certain people are in control of certain things, just know that the outcome may not be how you want it to be because the game has to be played like it's meant to be played. And the players do not determine the outcome of the game. So. Remember her, Shakari Richardson. They used the story of her mother and put it all tied into mental health. Outside of athletes, mental health is the agenda that they're pushing right now. And it's a reason for that. All you have to do is remove your emotions and you'll be able to see. You'll just just go down a rabbit hole. Because the people, people was defending her. And saying that the Olympics need to change their rules, et cetera, et cetera. Then Michael Phelps get get um caught with marijuana and all of these these different things. For one, even if at the moment when she did it, she wasn't thinking about, oh, they're gonna drug test me test me or whatever. When she ran that race, she had to already know. It's like you don't just magically forget that you have to take a drug test. She already knew that those results was going to come back the way it came back. It wasn't no surprise to her. Don't think that this has just happened and people bullying her and picking on her and people need to do this and do that. One thing we have to realize is that when we are not in control, when we don't, (laughs) this is not our, our stuff. We can't dictate what the outcome should be. The Olympics, this, the NBA, all these different sports and the, the whole entire industry is not controlled by melanated people. If we, if we cannot come into their industry and then into their things and try to dictate how it should be. If we don't like their rules, then guess what? Get out of it. It, every time something happened, like when they'll put up the news station, put up an article to make a person, a melanated person, look bad, but a non-melanated person could have did the same crime, and they'll look, they'll put them in a, uh, you know, their graduation outfit, and then the melanated person, they'll try to find the the picture that'll make him, him or her look the worst. That's their stuff. If we don't like what we see, 
We cannot change their stuff. That means we create our own stuff. And that's what we are having a hard time understanding. We are in their stuff. We're making them money. Once we remove ourselves from that and say, you know what? I don't like the way they treating us over here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create my whole entire, my own thing. I'm going to create my version of the NBA. Because before the NBA was the NBA, yeah, the reason why the NBA came about, because the all-black league was cutting up. <laughs> they was over there hooping. And, the, and, you know, the people at B was like, hmm, what can I do? To make a few coins because my people up here ain't and this ain't working. This ain't entertaining. So I need y'all to come over here to my stuff and entertain my people. And then we'll let y'all we'll give y'all a few coins and then y'all come over here, you know? <laughs> you ha just if you take the money out of it, like sacrifice is what has to be made. <laughs> if people really want to see change with this type of stuff, that's what's going to have to happen. You cannot get into somebody else's industry that's controlled by these particular people and want to make changes. It just don't work like that. Just like somebody can't come in your house and tell you what you what you need to take down, what you need to put up, you can't come in that stuff and do the, do that either. Like when people be saying representation medals, da 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 da. <laughs> create your own representation stop looking for those people <laughs> yeah i know who them people are to represent you to put people in there who represent you no they want to represent them pe their own people that's with everything melanated people are the only ones who who want to involve everybody because we can have such a loving spirit but we have to realize that everybody is not like that. <laughs> everybody do not have that same spirit. We always want to invite everybody to the barbecue when nobody, well, when they really don't deserve to be at the barbecue. They don't even deserve to know about the barbecue. So, but moving on. And then this article recently came out about 10 minutes ago. Like, Probably an hour or two after um, that happened with Simone Biles. They put this article out. New era of pro prioritizing mental health. Now, I'm not saying that this is not a good thing. I'm telling you that I was just pushing the agenda. I'm happy that people are now prioritizing their mental health. I like, I know, I love the generation of you not finna overwork me. I'm staying at home. I'm taking my uh, PTO. I'm taking my sick days. I'm going on a vacation. I love this generation. Because the generation of I'm going to work 30, 40, 50 years, then retire, then go on vacation. No. So I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. All I'm saying is there is an agenda with it. Now, on the flip side of things, because you're going to have these people too, and the people that's into this kind of stuff, it's almost obvious. People think that when they see that goat, that it means the greatest of all time. In the other world, <laughs> or in, I ain't going to say in the other world, on the other side of things, that's not what that means. And people that know, know. If you don't know, you can just go Google it. When you think about goats in the industry, because she is in the industry. She is in the sports industry. And they don't let nobody, not one person, be great without taking that oath. Nobody. It's the same reason why Serena, we probably won't see her win another title if she don't give up something for it. And I don't mean like nothing sexually, anything like that. Whatever they have her do. Because if you watch Serena play, she can, she still got it. But you can see when she start, I don't want to say throw games, but when she just start, you know, messing up a little bit. Balls just start flying. 
You know, every which way. <laughs> you have to just pay closer attention and remove your emotions. You'll be, be able to see a lot more. But all I'm going to say is this particular thing does not mean what everybody walking around shouting. She's the greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Not to say that she is not the greatest of all time because she is dope. But she is very talented. And this is not to take away any um, any um, talent away from her. This is to say that there is a lot of there are a lot of talented people around. If you would like to display your talent on their platforms, on their world stage, it comes at a price. The price of fame. That's why you see a lot of talented people that just magically disappear. You see people people at the basketball court up uh, in your neighborhood all the time be dunking and shooting like nobody business. You be like, man, I wonder why they never made it. And they already put it in your head, only one in a million people or something, whatever the statistic is, will make it in the NBA, will make it to the NFL, will make it to this. It's not because it's not that many talented people around. <laughs> it's because it's only a certain amount of people that's willing to do what you have to do in order to display your talent on their stage. You're not displaying your talent on your own stage or on a stage controlled by people who just want to see your, who want to display your talent at no cost. If you get what I'm saying, you get what I'm saying. Now, let's go into what happened. Uh, now, I already know this ain't got nothing to do with her. Duh, 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 duh. Remember, stuff is always connected. So, about what a month ago maybe two months now Simone Biles brother had a mistrial right and they was like oh it was a paperwork mishap right so he had to get a retrial now before we go into what happened in his retrial let's just look at the situation at hand right they basically and these her her two older siblings are the ones that were not adopted by her who is that her grandparents whoever adopted her it's she have two older siblings that they never really talk about and he is one of them and the other sister um they don't really acknowledge her like that because she do I guess because she be in a little bit of trouble I don't know I mean because family is family no matter what but. This brother is one of those siblings that they never really, that she just recently actually acknowledged a little bit before he got into this particular situation. So, um, the brother, he was accused of murder and, you know, manslaughter and all this kind of stuff, right? Three people passed away and two more people was injured. So, that's five people, right? Now, this is what they said happened, allegedly. They said that he um, he saw a dude get into it with his cousin, allegedly. And then after he saw that, he ran over and, you know, him and his cousin allegedly started shooting up the place or whatever. Or shooting at the people who um, he got into it with, Right? They said right here that um, Johnson was the first one to grab the gun. I mean, not Johnson, that the brother Bows was the first one to allegedly grab the gun, right? Mind you, keep all this in, in mind because when we get to the, the final trial that just happened a month ago, you're going to be like, huh? What? How does that even make sense? So, right here it tells you that they both ended up shooting uh, one of the victims. And they said that it was Bow's gun. That um, the bullet from his gun that allegedly killed one of the victims, right? So, that means they already then took a, They had to have had the gun. 
they had to have tested the bullets. That means him and his cousin must have had, just, this is just logically thinking, because if they know the answers to this, that means test has to be ran. They have something in the evidence, right? So they have some type of evidence to know these things, to know that his gun, the bullet from his gun, was the one that allegedly killed one of the victims. Bow's bullet, right? That means y'all had to take the gun, test the bullet, all this kind of stuff, right? Keep that in mind. Now, they said that the, the, the police officers took eight months to gather in, uh, evidence in order to um, have a case, right? In, in order to do an indictment, right? It took them eight months to do this. Eight months. Remember that. Now, the judge did a reach. It had went into mistrial the first time because they said that the the um, jurors had seen paperwork that they weren't supposed to that would say that the dude was um, defending himself, right? So they were saying that they said that. Um, you know, y'all can see the article. They said that the that influenced their decision. So because they saw their paperwork and the paperwork influenced the decision that they would have made, the judge said, boom, mistrial, right? So about a month later, they went and um got a new, a whole new thing and started over, right? Now, the next trial, he was acquitted acquitted right this was in 2021 because this happened in 2018 now let's look and see how or why did he get acquitted right here he was acquitted because of lack of evidence now mind you if you go back to think logically in the first article they already knew that the bullet that was <laughs> The bullet out of his gun was the one that they said allegedly killed one of the people. Now, mind you, three people died. Two people was injured. Now, if you listen to the 911 call, it was just so, it was the driest thing that they didn't, they wasn't. Now, I'm not saying that everybody got to be in a panic because everybody is different. But if you just standing there looking at two dead bodies, you got to have some form. You're going to have some form of emotion. But people show emotions different. But I'm just saying. But they went from that to having all of that evidence in that article about. Because they even said, oh, he started. They started getting into it because Bows, uh, he, Bows looked over and saw his cousin allegedly getting into it with one of the victims, and then he came over there. Like, they had all these details, right, in the article at first. And then you come to the next one, boom. Oh, there's no evidence. Lack of evidence. Lack of evidence? Now, mind you, listen to this 911 call. It's a party arrest. Somebody just got shot at a party? Two people did. Is there any serious bleeding? They're, they're, they're both dead. Right? So that means whoever this particular person is who called, they probably would have asked him, well, what did, did you see something? That don't mean he did. But the whole situation, even the background, the whole thing was just, y'all seen when, when stuff be happening at them parties? The whole thing be in chaos. You don't even hear no noise in the back. Not to say that this is fake. I'm just saying logically thinking. Now, Let's see what the mother had to say. Uh, one, the mother of one of the victims. Own files had something to do with the judge's decision. Yes, I do. There was so much evidence um, that the prosecutor would bring up that she shooed away that wasn't able to be let in. The judge's decision comes as the gymnastics legend prepares for the Tokyo Olympics next month. So you just look at that right there. Now, now remember, 
everybody this don't have nothing to do with Simone Biles herself like she did not commit a crime this doesn't have nothing to do with her per se but because y'all already know how media works they're gonna attach you to who they're gonna attach you to right <laughs> but just to think about just no matter how much you love Simone Biles and all this different type of stuff there are still victims in this situation and there's still families that's hurting, right? So that's not to say that her brother is innocent and her brother is guilty. But if you just read the articles, put it all together, <laughs> logically think, think about what the mom just said about the amount of evidence that was magically thrown out and think about a time that you know well, you have seen this happen for melanated people. Because any chance they get to put melanated people behind bars, they put them there. So just think about how this one particular person, and not to say that the mom was right in her statement or nothing. I'm just saying logically think. So, going back to Simone Biles, at, even though she had to withdraw from the team, you know, they still ended up winning a silver medal. And, you know, they all look uh happy just for the picture. And, you know, her and Jordan looked like they was dancing and having a good time. But you have to think about, um, you know, just the agenda that they're pushing right now. Not to say that this is fake and she couldn't be happy now and she wasn't struggling then. Like, we all know that they put her, well, the media put her under a lot of pressure. And so does people who are into sports. Like, when I was a big sports fan, whoever I supported, I wanted them to do good. If I expected, if I knew that you was great, then I expected greatness out of you every time I saw you play. <laughs> every time. When like thinking about when I used to be very into sports, I never even took the opportunity to think about what they were going through outside of sports because I my my mind was so so much on the trophy, uh, a championship, a win. You know, I never thought about maybe this athlete need a break. Hey, you ever thought about that? <laughs> that's just me personally. I'm not saying that's how all sports people think. I'm just saying for me, when I when I was looking at sports and I was a big sports fan, I wanted my team to win. Uh, I'm not going to say by all means necessary, but I'm saying I wanted them to win or the individual to win. I just never thought about, oh, this person may need a break. And some sports fans, don't they don't think about that. So I'm not saying this, her up here dancing and having a good time. You know, I'm not saying this is fake. I'm not saying... Nothing. I'm just saying, just think about it. And the last part that I want to talk about when it comes to gymnastics was Sonny Lee. If you've been paying attention to gymnastics, not and not, I'm not even, when I say pay attention, I don't even mean like in great detail. Just studying it, oh, know everything that's going on. I don't know every single thing that's happening in gymnastics, but I've been seeing them set her up. <laughs> to be the face of gymnastics for a very very long time all you got to do is go back and google a little some articles now remember Sonny Lee is an Asian she is Asian y'all know the push that's going on the agenda that's going on with Asians right now especially American Asians or Asian Americans. Just look at all of the articles that they have been um, doing for Sunny Lee. And don't forget that they passed this anti-Asian hate bill. Like, all of this type of stuff came out of nowhere. You don't even, like, just think about you personally. And think about, do you know anybody? Who just beating up on agents or who just don't like agents. This this agenda started for a particular reason after the election. Put all that together. 
Think logically. Think about China. Think about who owns a lot of things in this country. Think about who, you know, just put all that together. And you can see why the agenda is being pushed. But don't forget that they signed this anti-Asian hate bill. Now, most of the videos that we that I used to see used to always be of Asians beating up on black people. <laughs> you seen them videos of them in a nail salon and uh, in the beauty supply? You ain't never seen no videos, not you, but I have never seen no videos in the past of blacks just beating up on random agents all the time like they did, like the agenda they was pushing recently that what that cost this bill to be passed, right? Now, notice you ain't never seen no um, <laughs> anti-black American hate bill passed, right? And how long we've been going through, how long melanated people been going through this? But anyway, Sonny Lee, look at the headline. Makes us wonder if gravity actually exists. When I tell you, not not to say that this this young young uh, woman is not a talented gymnast. This has nothing to do with talent. When I'm speaking on like the the industry and all and, and sports and all of this is is not about talent. We know they're talented. We know they work hard. It's about the ability to display, having the ability to display your talent on their platform on their stage that's all it's about that's not to say that somebody is more talented than the other not not to say that uh this young lady ain't talented or any other athletes aren't talented or movie stars or whoever that don't mean they can't act that don't mean you know it just mean if you would like the the platform to display your talent whatever your talent may be <laughs> it, it, it there's a price for it Look, gymnast Sunny Lee makes history because she was the first. Uh, I don't know how to say what she is. Uh, is it? I don't know how to pronounce it, but that H M O N G, Hamong, Hamong. I'm sorry if I'm messing it up. I don't know how to pronounce it. I should have looked it up beforehand, but I didn't. But yeah, that's basically an agent, though. She's in the Asian ethnic group. She's making history as the first one, basically like the first Asian to be on the American uh, Olympics team. Gymnast uh, Olympics team. Gymnastic Olympics team. So they've been pushing her for the longest to become the face of gymnastics. Once again, if y'all saw on their stage that they was about to allow uh Simone to get six gold medals <laughs> potentially think again you got to remember you can have all the talent that you want but it's not your stage that's why it's important that we create our own and stop putting all our emotions and in, in time into that other one And then y'all remember this, uh, I don't know if people actually even saw this movie because I didn't watch it myself, but I know that I saw the trailer for it. And when I saw it, I was like, wait, what? Just look at this movie. We never expected to have freedom or independence or equality in this country. This was before that movie Boogie came out and then boogie <laughs> boogie like boogie but okay this movie came out at the height of that Asian hate situation that was going on anti-Asian hate situation when the bill was being passed that's when Netflix dropped this movie just think about that because before all this even happened this wasn't even a thing Asians, from my perspective and some of the other people's perspective that I know, 
have never had this huge of a problem in America. Matter of fact, the people who had the most problem in America is Americans. Because when you come over here, a lot of the times you can get assistance. It's the people that's from here, that's from this soil, who don't get the assistance and help that's needed. Not to say that it's uh it's not people out there that do not get the assistance. That's not to say that all Asians um, get assistance and all Asians are rich and they don't have problems. That's not to say that, but I'm just saying. This magically became a focus right after the election. Now, back to Sonny Lee. Remember... They have been pushing her to become the face of gymnastics for a very long time. They even put this article out not that long ago, like right before uh, the Olympic trial started. It was saying how she beat Simone Biles when they knew that that the win didn't even, it wasn't even a big win. It wasn't nothing that even mattered. <laughs> but they wanted to make it look so grand. Because they have been pushing her to become the face of gymnastics for a very long time. It wasn't nothing but the trials. <laughs> but they made it so glamorous. Like it was the finals or something. And like I say, if y'all think they was going to allow her to get six gold medals at one time. Think again, because it's not our stage. So to wrap all this up to say, I hope that um, Simone does take care of her mental health. I'm not saying that she's not struggling mentally. And uh, I think everybody needs to take the time out to, you know, go within themselves, relax, uh, cut all the hoopla off. You know what I'm saying? Don't pay attention to a lot of these things that's going on in the media, because all they're doing is harvesting energy. And chill out. I know that Simone, she will get through this, but I say all that to say, when it comes to things that's not in your control, it, or if we want to do it as, um, when it comes to like sports and movies and TV shows and the news stations and all of these different places where you don't see what you want to see, you don't see the representation you think should be there. The, the games and all of these different things that happen. Just know that somebody is in control of it. And it's not the, the player. So I say all that to say that this is a game that's not controlled by the players that's playing it. The players that's playing it have to play the game like they are, like it's meant to be played, like it's rolled out to be played. So, I don't know if she's going to do the individuals, but hopefully she can come back and go back to being the great person that she is in sports. But before she do that in sports, she take hopefully she can take care of herself first and don't worry about the pressure and all those other things. But just know, when you play the game, you have to play it how it's meant to be played. And I'm out.